Today I'm doing a Traction 7 tutorial. Now Traction T7 is one of my favorite free digital audio workstations, but is it the best free DAW for you? Maybe. I'm going to show you how to start making music in this Traction 7 tutorial, and I'll let you decide if it's the best free DAW for your music production. Welcome to Simple Green Tech. I'm Radio Zane, and on this channel, I do audio tech tips, tutorials, and reviews to help you unleash your creativity. Now today, I'm looking at Traction T7, and I know I've done several videos on this specific digital audio workstation, but I wanted to update a few things and combine them into this one video. So what am I going to be looking at in this Traction 7 tutorial? Well, first, I'm going to look at setting up your audio interface in T7, and then I'll look at doing some recording into Traction 7. After that, we'll get into installing VST plugins, how to set up your MIDI keyboard, and how to use VST instruments in Traction T7. This is going to give you a great starting point for making music on your computer. And just so you know, I've linked to all of the software and any hardware that I mentioned in this video, it's linked in the description below in case you want any further information on any of it. But right now, let's jump in. First, we're going to quickly set up our audio interface in Traction T7. So what we're going to want to do is go into the Settings tab, then make sure you're on Audio Devices, and then in Audio Device Type, you want to change this to ASIO. And then in Device, you would select whatever your device is in here. So I'm going to be using the Focusrite 2i2, and because we're creating music, I'm going to leave the sample rate at 44,100 hertz. Your audio interface may be capable of higher settings, but if you aren't familiar with changing sample rates, you may want to stick with the 44,100 for now. It's the standard for CD audio, and you'll likely want to dither down to that eventually anyway. And you should just leave the buffer size the way it is for now. This is what's going to control your latency. The lower the number here, the lower the latency. But it will also use more CPU power and it could cause the DAW to become a little bit unstable and maybe even crash. So I suggest just leaving it at this, see how it goes. Now let's record some audio into Traction T7. I have my guitar plugged directly into my audio interface, and I'm going to record the guitar dry, which means no effects or anything, just the guitar going straight into the interface. Go to the track that you want to record on, and then click into this area right here and you're going to want to select the input that you're going to be recording to. I'm recording to input two, so that's what I'm going to click. And you can see when I strum my guitar, there's a signal coming in here. And then the next step is to arm the track for recording. This tells the system that this is the track that you're going to record onto. And you can record onto multiple tracks at the same time if you really wanted to, but we're not going to get into that for this video. I'll save that for another time. But before we actually start recording, I recommend going into the click track setting down here. And you want to go to the pre record count in length. Let's use one bar count in. Then turn on your click track here. This gives you some time between pressing record and actually starting to record. If you don't do this, it will start to record as soon as you press the record button. So we have our input set. The track is armed for recording, and our click track is all set up. Let's record some audio. Now, all you want to do is just press the record button, and away we go. So, there's our dry recording of guitar, and dry guitar is kind of boring. We need to add some character to it, but Traction T7 doesn't come with an AmpSim plugin. So we'll need to download a third party plugin and install it. We should also look at getting some VST instruments too, like a drum plugin and maybe a synth plugin. I'm going to use the free guitar amp sim from IK Multimedia. It's called Amplitube Custom Shop. There are other free guitar amp sims out there, and if you're interested, I did another video comparing three of them. I'll link to it below in case you want to check that one out. I'm also going to download MT Power Drum Kit from their website, and this is going to be my drum plugin. And for my synth plugin, 
I'm going to download Synth Master Player free. And you can get this over at Plugin Boutique. I've linked to it below along with MT Power Drum Kit and IK Multimedia's Amplitude Custom Shop. When you have your plugins downloaded, start to install them. Sometimes you might get a plugin that's just a DLL file in a zip folder and there's no installer. And what you want to do with that is bring it into your VST plugin folder. On 32 bit systems, it's going to be in Program Files x86, and then you'll see VST plugins. If it's not there, you can always create it. And for 64 bit systems, it's going to be in Program Files VST plugins. And you can just drop your DLL files into this folder here. If you do have an installer, you might want to make sure that it installs into each of these folders. So the 32-bit one you want to install into the 32-bit folder and the 64-bit one you want to install into the 64-bit folder. Most of the time it's going to select these folders by default, but sometimes it does choose another folder. And typically that one is Program Files, Steinberg, and you'll find your VST plugins in here usually. And we're going to set up Traction T7 to find this folder along with the other ones. So even if your plugins install to one of these folders, Traction T7 is going to find it. So now that we have some plugins downloaded and installed, let's go back into Traction. And what we're going to want to do now is go to Settings. And then you want to go to Plugins. And you want to go down to Scanning and Sorting. And then you want to click on Scan for New or Updated VST Plugins. You're going to see this Select Folders to Scan here. And I've already included my C Program Files VST Plugins and my C Program Files x86 VST Plugins. But now I'm going to choose the Steinberg folder just to show you how you do choose the folders. So for me, I'm going to go to Local Disk C. And I want to go down to Program Files. If yours isn't clicked there, just click Program Files. And then you want to go down and find the folder that you want. So if you don't have the VST Plugins folder already selected, make sure you select that one first, and then you can come back and choose another one. Now I'm going to choose Steinberg, VST Plugins, click OK. You can see that it's added that to the folders that we're going to scan for plugins. And once you have all your folders set up in here, click scan. And you're going to see it's going through the whole scan process here. And now you're going to see I had some errors here. And what this is, is because I'm using the 64-bit Traction T7, and I actually had it set to scan for the 32-bit folder. So this is just telling me these ones didn't load, and these were actually 32-bit plugins anyway. So that doesn't bug me too much, so I'll just click OK, and we'll close out of that. Now we can go back into our project. And I want to spruce this recording up a little bit. So what I'll do is right click over in this area here, and I'm going to go to Add New Plugin, and I'm going to find my amp sim, which is Amplitube. And once it's loaded, you can start listening to various presets on your recording to find your desired sound. You may want to loop a section so you can hear it go over and over again while you scan for sounds. And to do that, you just want to click and drag these markers here. So say you want to keep it at the start, you can do that, or you can move it around if you want. But I'm going to leave it at the start, and then I'm going to go to about four bars out, and say that's what I want to loop. So I'll leave it there, and then I'll just click on this loop button here. And now when I play it back, this is going to loop this over and over again. That way we can just continue to look for presets. Now let's add our drum plugin. So we're going to go to track two. And then you right click over here. You want to go down to add new plugin and you locate MT power drum kit or whatever drum plugin you might have. And you can see our drum plugins here. And the cool thing about MT power drum kit 
is that it has grooves already pre-done. So you don't have to program your drums individually. You can actually go in here and you can start off with something like a groove here. And you can actually listen to these grooves before you add them in. Let's preview what some of them sound like. And there's also fills over here, so you can change it up every now and then. All right, say this is the one we like. Let's drag that in here. Now we have a MIDI clip that has all our drum information on it. And obviously it's not as long as our clip. So what we're going to want to do is duplicate it. And you can just hold down control on your computer keyboard and then click and drag on this clip. And then you can do it again. And you can do this as many times as you need. You can also right click on it and you can copy. And then you can press control V on your computer keyboard and you can paste it wherever you want. And that can be handy if you're working on parts later on in the song and you want to copy this stuff from the beginning over to that part. And you can do the same thing with your audio files that you recorded. Just click and drag while holding the control button down on your computer keyboard. You can also trim your audio files. You can see I have nothing at the end here. And to trim it up, you just click on this hollow triangle in the corner of your clip. And then you can drag and now we have eight bars here that are all lined up my playing wasn't that great so the loop isn't going to be that great but yours will be much better when you do it say you liked this beat but you wanted to add something or take something out you can actually zoom in onto your midi clip here and you can see all of your notes if you don't see them you might be scrolled up too much so you can just actually use the wheel on your mouse to scroll down here until you find the section that has the notes in it. And you can actually delete notes by using the eraser tool here by clicking and erasing. Or you can draw in some other notes if you wanted by using the pencil tool and clicking wherever you want to draw in some new notes. Now we have a guitar track and some drums. Let's add in a synthesizer. But first you may need to set up your MIDI keyboard. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. You go back to settings, then you go to MIDI devices. And in here you should see the name of your MIDI keyboard and it might show disabled beside it. If it does, you actually just click on it and that enables it. And that's all you have to do. Make sure it says enabled. We're now ready to go record something with our MIDI controller. So now to select the MIDI input, we just click into this area here again. And I'm going to go down to Key Station Mini 32. You select whatever MIDI keyboard you have. And now we'll add our Synth Master plugin here. So you right click over here, add new plugin. And you can see we have our Synth Master plugin loaded up. To record this, we'll just arm the track for recording just like we did before. And then you can easily just go down and click on the record button here. If you want to go back to edit some things, it's easy to go in. You can just zoom in by going down to the scroll bar and using the wheel on your mouse to zoom in or out. And then you can see it here and we can click and drag notes around if we need to. And of course, just like before, you can click on the pencil tool and draw more notes in if you want to. One of the other neat things is you can click on the velocity control can click and control how hard or how soft you press a note. And that's a pretty cool feature to have in there. And just like before, you can press control on your computer keyboard, click and drag and create as many of these as you like. 
Traction T7 makes it very easy to start creating music, and if you're new, you just need to practice a little bit, and you're going to be making great songs or albums in no time. You've got this. Click right here to see my Traction 7 tutorial playlist, or click down here to see what YouTube recommends you watch next. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos from me. For Simple Green Tech, I'm Radio Zane, and we'll talk soon.